Hi, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose a refrigerant overcharge on an air conditioner. Now, although this is somewhat of a rare condition, this does occur when you have installers or technicians that are not as skilled and they don't properly charge the air conditioning unit. So now to begin with, we need to turn the thermostat to call for cooling, and we can do that by clicking on the selector switch here. This will also turn down the temperature setting, so it won't be necessary to use the arrows. We're going to refer to the procedure guide at the top after each step. So now that we've done this, we're going to click OK. Now we want to assess which electrical loads are running. And we can see here that the indoor fan is, in fact, running as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows. So we're going to click Yes. And we go to the outdoor unit, and we see that the outdoor fan is, in fact, operating, or the condenser fan motor. So we're going to click Yes. And it appears that our compressor is also operating. Now, again, if you can't tell audibly whether the compressor is running or not, you can always attach a clamp-on ammeter to the common wire to determine that it's drawing current. And that will just provide verification that the compressor is operational in the event that you can hear it. So we're going to assume it's running. We're going to click yes. Now, what this means is we have a mechanical problem. All electrical loads are operational, although I would tell you in some cases, a severe overcharge of refrigerant or a severe undercharge due to a leak may cause the unit to cycle off on the high pressure or low pressure cutouts. But for this particular malfunction here, it's not that severe. The units are continuing to run. So our next step, once verifying we know it's not an electrical problem, is to measure pressure as well as superheat and subcooling. So we're going to start by attaching the red hose to the liquid line service port. This is the high pressure connection. This will also attach a clamp thermometer. And we're going to attach the low side hose to the suction service port, which will give us our low side pressure. This will also provide us with our suction line temperature with this convenient clamp probe here. Now these digital gauges will calculate everything for you, but let's take a look. Now first of all, our superheat's normal, and that's okay. I mean the TXV metering device is going to maintain superheat in the event of an overcharge. However, if we look at the evaporator temperature, it's kind of high. It's just slightly high, 48 degrees. Generally, an air conditioner should operate somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees. The warmer evaporator is going to result in less heat being absorbed, and it's going to cause the unit to run longer to make temperature, as well as draw more amperage, which means it's going to be more power consumption while it's on. So this is a pretty inefficient condition. Now, if we look at our high side, we have 477 PSIG, which results in 130 degree condensing temperature. Now, under normal conditions, the condensing temperature should be about 20 degrees above the outdoor ambient. So we should be around 115 there. So both of our pressures evaporating and condensing temperature are excessive. They're both high. Now we want to look at our subcooling. Now this unit has a TXV metering device, so our charging indicator here, or the way we actually accurately assess the charge as well as correct the charge, would be to measure subcooling. Now, if you look on the unit data plate, in most cases, there'll be a target subcooling margin listed on there. And in this particular unit, it's 13 degrees. Now, in the event that you can't locate the target subcooling on the data plate, you may need to look at the installation booklet that came with the unit. It may provide you with the information there, but there's also default numbers that can be used, but we won't talk about that right here. But what we do know is that with a target subcooling margin of 1330 is, is way too high. It's excessive and this indicates an overcharge of refrigerant. That is our telltale sign is the subcooling margin. Now listen, if this had a fixed bore metering device instead of the TXV or thermostatic expansion valve, we would use a superheat charging method. And an overcharge of refrigerant with a fixed bore meter device would cause the evaporator to be flooded and the superheat would go down. It, it could even go to zero, which would indicate liquid flood back. But again, this unit has a thermostatic expansion valve, so we do use subcooling here. So we pretty much know that the unit is overcharged at this point. We're gonna click OK in the procedure guide. And we've determined that, you know, we've attached the hose and we've determined that once we've done that, that we're definitely not within the target, plus or minus three of the 13 degrees. And our subcooling is high here, not low. It's 30 instead of 13. 
Again, that subcooling margin that you measure only needs to be within plus or minus three of the target of 13. Now, we want to just take a brief look at the outdoor unit and make sure that we don't have any debris or leaves or any kind of dirt on the coil. Make sure we have good airflow. And just doing a quick visual inspection here, uh, we can see that the coil appears to be clean, so there's no restrictions or anything like that. Now, in removing refrigerant, the proper way to do this is to use a recovery cylinder and hook it up to the middle hose on the gauge manifold, in this case where the pink knob is. Now to remove refrigerant, you're going to need to open up the red valve because the pressure in the high side on the liquid line is going to be greater than the tank pressure. Now when we're adding refrigerant, we have to add it through the suction, which is the blue knob. But in this case, we're removing it and the pressure is going to be higher there. So when we open up that red knob and that pink knob, that refrigerant comes out and goes into the tank. And you're going to want to do this incrementally because it can happen real quick and it can result in you taking too much refrigerant out of the system. So we've done this and if we look now, we can see that our pressures, our evaporating and condensing temperatures are now normal. And if we look at our subcooling margin, we're within three degrees of that target of 13. We've got 14 now. So we've solved this problem. So we're gonna click OK in the procedure guide. And what I would tell you to do next is observe one full cycle of operation to make sure everything's working properly. I would also pull the indoor filter and clean it or replace it if necessary. Just a little added value for the customer. So we're gonna click OK that we've removed the charge. And last but not least, we're gonna to go to the residence and verify that cool air is being delivered through the floor register here. And we can see from our graphic that in fact it is. So we've solved this problem. Now listen, if you need to review any of the steps that we just took, click on this top left icon and you can review each step in the process. Good luck in all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.